tell you where the fish are. Get in there. Ooh, that's a nice fish. Yeah, yeah man. Bam. 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 Hey everybody, Chris Schaefer of Potsky Outdoors. Today we're coming to you from the South Carolina, Georgia border. We're on the Chattooga River and it's fall. What's great about the fall is, got great weather, no crowds, and beautiful crystal clear water, which means you drift a salmon egg down in the hole, you drift a fire die worm down the hole, and guess what? You're gonna get bit. Now one of the things about the Chattooga, it's stocked with a lot of trout, but a lot of small trout. You may have to sift through a lot of eight, nine, 10, 11 inch fish before you get one any bigger than that. One of the great things about being here today, see this, there's nobody here. You can come up here with your family, you can catch your limit, go home and have a great meal without having to put in a lot of work. Again, we're standing on the South Carolina side, that's the Georgia side, this is the Chattooga River. We're gonna show you how to catch trout in a short amount of time. <laughs> First cast, little rainbow, but first cast. There's a little rainbow, pretty colors on this guy. We're just getting started here. We're getting them, about every cast. Water's low and the trout are hungry. One of the great things about fishing the Chattooga River is there is a lot of public access. Uh, you have roads that traverse the national forest land here. Uh, and you also have heavy stocking that comes from two sides. It comes from the state of Georgia and the state of South Carolina. Now we're fishing today on the South Carolina side. It is fall time. Uh, we've had a drought. It's been a couple of months before there's been any rain at all. Uh, and the Chattooga is some of the smallest water I've ever seen up here. Uh, so you have to change your tactics. What I mean by that is you're gonna have to downsize all the way down to two pound test, maybe four pound test on your leader line, or uh, you risk not getting any bites at all. The water is that clear. I mean, the visibility is all the way to the bottom. If you can see them, they can see you. Shows you how good our bait is today. Both of us are wearing bright, solid Clemson orange standing on the bank and we're still getting bit. So bring out those Potsky salmon eggs. Bring out the fire dye and expect to get bit. We've been fishing this pool out here for about a half hour now. Action's pretty consistent. We've caught about two dozen fish. It's every cast. Uh, we're using a couple different baits. We're using natural deluxe salmon eggs. We're using chartreuse garlic salmon eggs. And we're using chartreuse fire dyed worms. These are some night crawlers we did up in fire dye here, guys. Um, chartreuse. These night crawlers, they're real awesome. Uh, when we when we fire dye them, it just adds a brilliant UV chartreuse color to them. And uh, as you can see, he's wiggling around. It doesn't kill him. You know, we did this. We did this about an hour ago. And you only you only need to let him sit in the fire dye for about. You know, you want to let them in there for about 20 minutes. And you want to be conservative when you put the dye in them. You don't want to overdo it, because if you overdo it, it's going to kill them and they're going to drown, just like, you know, water or anything. Um, so yeah, you just want to let them sit for about 10 minutes or so. Then you'll take them out. And you only need about a about an eighth of a bottle. About an eighth of a bottle for about two packs of worms. And they'll, they'll, absorb, they'll absorb the dye and they'll hold that color and maintain it throughout until something eats it. And it just looks, just adds a brilliant UV chartreuse color to them and it just really stands out in the water, especially when you're fishing areas, you know, that are heavily pressured, giving those fish something they haven't seen that is just brilliant in the water, especially on, you know, cloudy days like this and even sunny days, those bright colors work well sometimes. So it really, uh, really makes a big difference. We've just been switching back and forth in between baits. Honestly, the action's been so good right now that we haven't really 
hasn't really made a difference, but uh, they're hammering everything. But once they slow down on one bait, we'll keep switching through other ones. Okay, so those of you that are familiar with the Chattooga River, uh, many of you have seen this. That's Burl's Ford Bridge. Uh, and normally there's a lot more water in here, as you can see. Now we tried to avoid this place uh, simply because it's so easily accessed and there's so much pressure here, but we wanted to show you that there are still plenty of trout in one of the largest holes on the river. Like that one right there. Doesn't take long, we've probably caught a dozen here in the last 10 minutes. Uh, caught and released every single one of them, as we'll do with this one. Once again, it's a lot of small, eight to nine, maybe a 10 inch fish if you're lucky, but this famous hole, if you're a newcomer, you drive to this bridge, that's Georgia, he's driving from Georgia into South Carolina right now, okay? So that's the state borderline right there. And if you wanna catch a lot of fish and you're a newcomer, you come to this hole right here, he's gonna show you how, how quickly it can happen because there has just been a ridiculous number of trout and there you go. So that took about 10 seconds. Um, that's one of the longer ones, uh, wait times that we've seen today. Uh, but again, Potsky Balls of Fire, and you could have your limit in five minutes. I know that's too quick for a lot of us, but if you have some kids, you have a niece, you have a nephew, get them on out here, take them to this massive hole, and you will catch your limit pretty quickly. The rig we're using today, guys, is pretty basic. Uh, we're just float fishing, and all that means is, you know, we're drifting a bobber at the same speed of the current, nice and natural, through the holes. So what we're using today is, we got about a five foot ultralight ugly stick, rated four to 10 pound test. We have six pound monofilament line on it. And I prefer monofilament line for float fishing because the line floats and it'll just help you maintain a nice natural drift throughout the hole. So, first thing is you wanna put your bobber on. This is a Drennan bobber, but you don't have to get, uh, you don't have to get too technical with them. I mean, anything will work. You know, you just want to make sure you have enough weight underneath your bobber so your bait's getting down to where the fish is at and your bobber's sitting nice and vertical. You know, the key, what I like to do is just, you know, maintain a nice natural drift throughout the hole and uh, keeping it vertical will just allow you to really dial into the level of fish you're feeding at. So you put your bobber on and I like to put, you know, a few small split shots just below my bobber. Then I have a small black barrel swivel right below the split shot. You know, then de depending on how deep of the holes I'm fishing, you know, I'll usually put a two to four foot fluorocarbon leader on a four pound test, or even two pound test sometimes in this clear water. So I got about, right now I got about a two foot leader on, and I just have small black BB shot spread throughout my line. Um, I like to use the BB shot because it's just super stealthy, and especially in this low clear water makes a big difference. So then I just have a size 10 Eagle Claw egg hook, and, uh, putting it on with the fire dyed worm or balls of fire and we're catching fish. As we mentioned, there's an endless amount of public access here. Uh, we actually walked about a quarter mile, maybe a little bit more upstream of the highway uh, in order to get into some areas that weren't as heavily fished. Uh, and, and knowing so, we're still catching plenty of fish, even not near the obvious roadside access area. So don't be afraid to wander a little bit. Uh, you'll catch fish no matter where you go if you got good bait. Oh, and we got another fish on over here. It's fish after fish after fish. Now the Chachuga River is a place you've probably seen on many movies. Uh, for the last several decades, you've seen a lot of movies filmed here. Uh, it's also a great place to come trout fishing, whether you're a weekend warrior, uh, first time angler, or a hardcore angler that uh, fishes a lot. Today's adventure, unfortunately, was a short one. Uh, we spent midday fishing the Chaga River further downstream and I uh, had a couple hours to spare. So about 3.30 p.m. with the sun going down at 5.30, we drove up here uh, and gave ourselves about an hour and a half to fish. So all the footage you're seeing today is coming within about an hour and a half period. If you live in the mountains or if you live down in the low country of South Carolina, it's a short drive from anywhere you may live to come up here and, and licenses are very inexpensive.